Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is going on, everybody? Big, big week for you. It is Furnace Fest week. So to celebrate the return of Furnace Fest and Hatebreed and Throwdown, finally sharing the stage together after what? how many years was it, Brian? It's been seven or eight, right? Maybe longer than that. I ten? Think even lo- I think since they've played maybe seven or eight, but it's got to be over 10 years since we played together. Yeah, has to be. Yeah, so we got we got Dave Peters on the show. Really psyched to have him on, and I'll see everybody this weekend at Furnace Fest. Also, was there still meet and greets for Atlanta? And uh, depending on when you're hearing this or watching this, we're in next next four shows are Knoxville, Atlanta, Charlotte, Alabama for Furnace Fest, and then uh, and then the two shows in Florida, which Tampa is almost sold out. So get your tickets real quick. I just want to thank our sponsors. Um, make sure you go and uh, support IndieMerchStore.com. You know, I love me some Indie Merch Store. Use the code JOSTA10. You'll see all the great stuff that they have over there, whether it's pre-orders, whether it's uh, restocks or new accessories. You'll find it all at IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10 and you'll save 10%. I know the Chaos Horrific uh, Cannibal Corp stuff sold out, but I love when... Flesh-colored uh, vinyls. Yeah, actually, maybe... Hard as might, hell. It might not all be sold out, but yeah, most of it... Uh, is but they have like that new Carnifex pre order, the vinyl look six, the new slack jaw, Grim Reaper t shirt. Um, all the Thy Art is Murder stuff is selling out quick. Carnifex hoodie, you'll see it all. And listen, while you're spending money over at merch stores, you can go to martyrstore.net. We got a couple meet and greets left for Florida and Charlotte at martyrstore.net, and we have our event shirts. If you missed out in Jersey, everybody wants the New Jersey Devil shirt or the uh, Milwaukee, they wanted the Badger shirt from Milwaukee, they're all up at martyrstore.net and uh and again for furnace fest this weekend furnacefest.us for tickets and we will have a limited shirt for that fest as well all right we got dave peters from throwdown finally after 600 and i don't know how many episodes great chat with dave and i think you guys will enjoy it now on to the show my friend, the lead singer of Hate Breed, the infamous and notorious Jamie Jasta, is in the building. That's what's up. Jamie Jasta from the metal band Hate Breed. That guy's famous. Coffee, death metal, and push ups. That's Jamie Jasta. Remember Jamie Jasta? You know him. He's a podcaster, but he's also a metal man. I would say you need that. That shit is hard. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> Brian, do you want to tell Dave how you heard of Throwdown? Because maybe Dave knows what band it was tacked to. Maybe he has a story. It's a funny story. I uh, I like illegally downloaded a different album and uh-huh. a, a Throwdown track was just attached to the end of the fight, like at the end of the album. And I was like, who the fuck is this? This is way different than this other band. And this is dope. And uh, that's how I discovered Throwdown. That's tricky marketing. You, you know. <laughs> did you do that on purpose, Dave? Like, did you put it at the end of like, because yeah, bands like used to best, do that. Like all the best records, we just go and, you know, just tack them on the end. And, and the upload theory. them to LimeWire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we had the opposite on LimeWire where people just changed our titles to something like terrible and then people really thought we had a song called that we're like dude no there's it's also like the name of a nine inch nail song on there and slayer but people didn't put it together right. oh god <laughs> yeah we that that haunted us actually the lime wire whoever did that they were like i hate these guys i'm gonna ruin their career but that was a know, wild, like, that was a wild time that was a wild west of uh of uh you know music sharing everything the lime wire and the um what was the other one uh, yeah, Napster. Napster. All that. Can't remember. There's another Pirate one. Bay. <laughs> Kazaa. Alex Atkinson says Kazaa. Kaza. What was Kazaa? Kaza? Yeah, I that was heard one. of that. Yeah, yeah, that was the one I think we used. I, I we, uh, yeah, I, I had slow internet, so I had to go to uh, a friend's house, and he would do all the he would do all the downloading for both of us. Dude, I had the slowest internet. I remember trying to get a porn clip on like the old dial up and like it took like two hours. And then when the clip played, it was like two pumps. Yeah, it's like, like a oh, commitment, outfit, you know, <laughs> but it's like it's like you got to like block out time in your day, you know, when you've got um, when you've got dial up and you're and you're committed to, you know, a clip. <laughs> so so before we get into everything, the big news is that this month, Furnace Fest 
first time Hatebreed Throwdown playing together, can you remember? Do you do you know when the last show together was? Who? Um, fuck, I don't. Do you remember what year it was? It was a long time ago. It was probably two thousand. Unless maybe like a random show, like in Europe, maybe like 2006 or so, or I think it was 2006. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. been a bit. I was just thinking about, um, in anticipation of this, I was thinking about the, the Euro tour that we did, uh, that you guys took us on in, and I think it was 2002. That um, was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Too and much they, fun. You, yeah. <laughs> you, you, uh, you guys played every song that you had up till that point. <laughs> um, and you're trying to remember them on stage. And I remember you guys, you would played, uh, it was like somewhere in the East. Like it was like Prague or it might've been, it might've been Prague, but, um, or hungry. And, uh, yeah, I remember you guys were like, going, all right, we're going to play every song we've ever written. And then you, you knocked them all out. in in that night you're trying to remember, cause there's like a couple that were, that you're going like, Oh, well, what's left <laughs> like on stage. So, yes, yeah, this, this might've been at the, this might've been at the dawn of the, the contract requirement set times. Do you remember <laughs> this? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you get like headline guarantee money. And then on the contract, it's got like 60. Some of those said 70. We're like 70 minutes. That's like four albums. Like, what are we going to do? Yeah. And then, and at the time we would use terror as an excuse. We'd be like terror plays 20 minutes or, or AF. Cause AF would headline and play like 25, 30 minutes. And we're like, how do they get away with it? But we can't. And they're like, oh, it's, it's different. You guys, you know, you gotta, you gotta try to play more songs so that was part of the reason why we made the songs longer yeah because well, you're under contract yeah and then when you've only got like i remember when you guys did it was one of the festivals or whatever and it was like i still laugh about thinking of it because they were like you had like 20 like it was like a i don't know, like a 25 minutes i might have been like tattoo the earth or something and i remember you put out a post you're like all right we've got 25 minutes so we've got time for like 17 songs or whatever. <laughs> yes. What do you want to hear? It's like, that's like half of them. Um, yeah, it's funny though, because like for Furnace Fest, we were we were just talking about this yesterday, um, last night in, in our in our throwdown group chat. <laughs> we were like, dude, do we need to add songs? Like, it's been a while. And we were like, we're looking at the set time because um you know we got replaced we are we uh replaced a band on main stage i think that the bled was supposed to play and then something happened and then they hit us up um but yeah we were looking at the set time and we didn't even think about it and then we we got the final you know schedule or whatever and we're looking at like it's like an hour up there i'm going like Dude, <laughs> I can't, I can't do anything for an hour, you know, <laughs> first show back. Yeah. Right. In how many years? And you got to do an hour. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see what goes on. I'm anticipating there'll be some kind of technical, whatever hiccup, knock on wood. There's not, but, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do like, we'll break out like a 10 minute, like we'll just do like a Q and a, you know? <laughs> like so, you you gotta go like full Mike Muir and just <laughs> nine minute story yeah about you know how no one should bring you down right or or do if you do a medley or if you do some sort of extended section like take one of your classic breakdowns and extend the mm. build up and then break it down even slower and then like pull the Rob Flynn and do the even slower. And then you, there's, there's a lot of things you can do to stretch the set out. This is the kind of advice that I need, you know, <laughs> like this is like, these are the kind of things you forget, you, you know, you, yeah, you do like a, you could do like a domination kind of thing where you just play that riff for like, you can play or like, like, uh, Oh, like bury me in smoke. You do like 15 minutes of the down set is not down set is a jam down set is just the end riff of bury me in smoke and you can end it and then you can just bring it back like when everybody's yes. in the parking lot it doesn't you can do whatever you want with that 
Yeah, that's yes. the to go. Because that whole whole other adding two more songs, uh, it's, it, that's a big uh, that's a big ask. I think you know. Did Did you play Furnace Fest with us, or was that Eighteen Visions? Uh, it was us. Yeah, we played with you guys in. So we did Furnace Fest twice. We did it um, twenty years ago this year, and we did it um, the first. I think the first time we did it. I don't know if it was the like second or third year that they had done it, but we did it in two thousand two and then two thousand three. So I, I think okay. we played the same. I remember you guys were there. I don't know if it was just like you must have. You must have played. I must have been a. Cause we did the year yeah, with Andrew cause... WK. Uh, oh right, or, right. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. that was probably the because we did one year where Living Sac. I think Living Sacrifice headlined, and I think I want to say like Eighteen Visions was on there. Oh, you know what? It might have been No Innocent Victim too. Okay. Like yeah, them. yeah. Um, and then there was another year, yeah, where you guys did it, and I want to say like death threat and shy yeah. halud and and uh stretch armstrong and terror yeah i was just and i actually i think in flames did it too i, I want to say one year oh shit i don't remember that i was just looking at in flames coming out here with sugar soon not to get sidetracked but that, i'm i'm pumped for that <laughs> oh yeah that's gonna be insane they just we just played with them at summer breeze with them and kill switch and in flames like just decimated it was incredible and they they're back to having like amps on the stage and shit too so it's not like um all quiet you know, in ears with the yeah, all quiet with the with the axe effects or what what would it kempers i think yeah they call them but are you are you flying in and and doing kempers or are you gonna have the back line rented and it's gonna be loud amps in the face it'll be loud amps yeah we're gonna do the, the whole back line and everything I, I don't even, I couldn't begin to even start screwing around with like anything else. We just got to go yeah. back to what, what we know, you know, it's like, um, but yeah, no, we're, we're stoked. We're, we're, uh, it's been like, I think the last time we played a show live was like 2015, maybe. Okay. So we a, yeah. We did a festival and we did a festival in Belgium. It was like a random um not rock fest uh what's the belgium one called do you remember the grass pop it? it's in the spring oh is it jira on air i can't remember but it's one where they had asked us forever to do it and we were always like ah like when we were actually touring we we, we never we never went out to europe during that time and then they hit us up in like 2015 and we're like, all right, yeah, why not? Like we're not doing anything else. Like <laughs> just go out there and did that. And we did, uh, we did rock fest in Montreal, but we haven't played in the States since like 2011. Okay. Yeah. So well, the, well, the, the bill is stacked. It's uh Friday's MXPX, Haybreed, Anne Berlin, Reliant K, Throwdown, Braid, Gideon, Hope's Fall, I mean, there's a ton of bands on here. No Trigger, Norma Jean, Open Hand, Piebald. Remember them? I booked a yeah. tour for them, I think, back in the day. I want to say I booked a Saves the Day Pie. I think I booked Saves the Day Piebald, Newfound Glory was the opener. Oh, wow. Yeah, like making like a hundred bucks, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Walls of Jericho, With Honor. With Honor, they're back. They're from Connecticut. Great band. I put out one of their albums. They they got a new song out. So people are traveling all over the world for this. It's Friday, uh, September 22nd. And then obviously the 23rd is Turnstile, Head Automatica, Thursday. And then the Sunday is Bane and Pennywise. So get your tickets now. You can go to FurnaceFest.us. But... Um, you know, present company excluded. Who's who are you mo <laughs> most looking forward to seeing? <laughs> at uh, and are you staying the whole weekend? Like, are you gonna like make this a hang, or you you are you out like on the re on the early morning five a.m. flight on Saturday? No, we'll stay for Saturday, um, and then um, yeah, I think we're gonna head out on Sunday because uh, it my it's funny. Like, I just my. I went to my daughter's kindergarten registration today, so I'm already like pulling, pulling her out of school for a throwdown gig, right? Put her on the plane. Uh, what's that? Putting her on the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so she's, you know, obviously, I mean, she's only in kindergarten, so she's she's never seen us play, um, and she's just kind of putting it together now. Like, like she'll, like, uh, you know, my wife will show her a, like a, a video or something, and she'll be like, like 
is that is that you? I'm like, yeah, I don't look, I don't look that different. Come on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, she's put it together, so it's kind of it's kind of cool. Like she, uh, I figured, you know, I, who knows? I'm only you're only cool for like this short window, you know what I mean? So I figure, all right, there's an opportunity to play. Uh, who knows when we'll, we'll play again, you know? Um, and there's this uh, opportunity to be cool, so I, I'm gonna I'll, I'll bring her out and. And hopefully she'll, uh, you know, remember that. That's great. No, she yeah. will. Yeah, she will. No, my daughter remember. I mean, my daughter's 25 now, but she remembers like uh, Giant Stadium with Metallica, like all the Oz Fest. Like she, but see, you got to be very careful because when they start to get into school, like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, everything you say, like even jokingly, they will pair it to a kid especially a kid who might be being rude at the time. Mm. And so I got multiple calls from the teacher and yeah. one was really, yeah. Like one was really bad. Well, cause she's going to see you and she's going to go, Oh man, my dad's a badass." And then if anybody says anything, you know, she could throw out the, you know, my dad will kill your dad. That happened one time. <laughs> I was like, why? And, and she goes, but daddy, you said that you would electrocute his parents. And I was like, I did. And I was like, and I got a call. It was like, it was a big deal. Like I had to apologize. I was like, I might've said it joking. To me. I, I was like, I, I was like, how random is that electrocute? I'm like, that's not even like my first go-to. Like that's right, crazy. Right. Yeah. Of all but the, I could of all see myself. That, say yeah. <laughs> But that that'll be great. So you're gonna have the the headphones. Yeah, yeah, we'll get her a special special pair of headphones or whatever. We actually took her. This wouldn't even be her first show because when she was like, uh, oh man, she must have been like five months old. We went to the um, Orange County Fair and Toto was playing. So and I love Toto. I love I love you know Rosanna. Hold the line, Africa. They're just like all hits, hit after hit. Yeah, so we brought her to see Toto, and we've got like you know video of her like with the with the headphones on, or whatever. It was sick though. We were like down really close, um, so it won't be her first show, but you know it's good. It's a good second second gig. Do you remember the band Section Eight? Yeah, from Albany. Yeah, they. I remember them being on. Were they on like that? Uh, were they? On, they were on some kind of comp with like neglect, with stigmata, and, and yeah. Yeah, I yeah, remember maybe East um, Coast Assault or one of those. Mm -hmm. They kind of had like a Life of Agony sound yeah. a little bit. I thought yeah. they were as good as good or better. They're probably huge now. Like, you know how these bands that will bubble up in the underground and become huge and find a fan base later on. Um, but I, I don't know if this is true. So maybe somebody can reach out and let me know if this is true. If, if Casey or anybody from Section 8 hears this. But I heard that the only time they ever reunited to play was to open for toto and it was at toad's place in connecticut supposedly i don't know if this is for real but supposedly like they would call and they would say if you ever book toto please let us play and then That's i guess true. this happened and i'm like this has to be fake is this real like someone needs to confirm this story yeah i need to know i i need i need confirmation That's so sick because that is awesome, right? If that was the only like, so 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 it wasn't like that was part of you wanting to reunite again, right? Like you don't like you as long as the it makes sense and it's going to be fun, you'll do it. Or does it have to be with certain bands? Oh, I mean, it would be a no brainer if it was if it was Toto, but I I don't <laughs> think there's any. <laughs> I, I funny. I think I have a. I don't know where it is. I've got, I got a, I just had, I just saw it a minute ago. I have the, a Maraca that I bought from the Toto show, <laughs> like for the, for Africa, you know? And then, um, oh God, it's got to find in my house in the mess right now. But, um, now, I, I mean, it's definitely way cooler to, to like, I mean, obviously play with you guys and, and, you know, bands that we know and that we're stoked on terror. Like, it's like, it would be a hard sell to, to go, Hey, just play this, you know, random show random fest where there's like you know mostly new bands but i i don't think that's really kind of i don't think i don't see that happening anyway it's like seems that there's like a lot of like uh you know there's a lot of cool like nostalgia sort of you know fests and 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 uh opportunities to play and so 
um, yeah, I mean, like it, that's a huge bonus, but it's like for this year, especially though, it was, you know, we were just, uh, we were kind of talking over like the last, like eh, probably two, three years and kind of like, um, you know, I reconnected with Mark after a long time. Um, I had, I was funny. I was driving home from Texas cause I had COVID and I couldn't fly. So I was, uh, my, my whole family had COVID and we're driving this rental car through like, you know, all of Texas to get back home on, the, on Christmas and, and, uh, Mark hit me up out of the blue. So I talked to him on this long drive and it was cool. And, and then, um, you know, I'd kind of exchanged texts and stuff with Ben every, every once in a while. And Matt and I have been tight for a long time, but, um, uh, but yeah, it was cool. Like the last couple of years, we sort of like kind of hinted at the idea of doing something. And then, um, you know, with it, this year's 20 years for uh, Haymaker. So we, we, you know, had always kind of had in mind of doing a show and then some, you know, this, this or that happened. We, we, we didn't have it really kind of planned out. And then we were like, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen this year. And it just felt like maybe not, doing it would be better this time this year and we could do it another time. But then this, um, uh, Chad, um, uh, hit us up for furnace fest and it was just, you know, it was perfect. I mean, it's like just, you know, all the right kind of circumstances. So. So as soon as it got announced, people are tagging me in every post writing me because there's been multiple, you know, throughout the years, there's been multiple posts that I'm tagged in multiple things related to throwdown because I like to give you guys shit. And I like to, you know, I'm sure you heard yeah. that at our show. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, dating back a while, it's pro- this has to be at least five years ago. You were, shout out to Doc, you were on Doc's podcast. And people, it was a very popular episode. A lot of people listen. I know because I started getting a lot of hate mail and a lot of people angry at me because they had only been, um, exposed to the band on the record that I quote unquote called whatever, uh, career suicide. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> so they, so they took offense to that and wanted to, you know, defend you, which I thought was awesome because it shows they're passionate about the band. Yeah. And, you know, as I was saying before, bands go away and it bubbles up in the underground. I've seen it many times. I've, I've seen this now probably 10 times. The first and biggest one I've seen it happen was with, was with refused because yeah. we played with refused back in the day when they were like strife McJr. Like it was right. like, it was like corny straight edge, no riffs. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, like, I think I saw them during during that period, and I never saw them when they when they turned into you know what they what they turned into, right? Which was like the precursor for new metal or yeah. something. I, I it was it whatever they did, it was life changing for dudes. And I was like, wait, is this the same band? No, they completely reinvented themselves. Right. Same with I guess like. Uh, I guess you could even say to to an extent like a bring me the horizon because yeah. when when they f- when their old manager I think was their old manager or someone that someone involved with the band had sent me it it was like wanna be suicide silence or wanna be black dahlia murder with the stupid hair and but then they like reinvented years later and like now they're like Lincoln Park McJr or whatever yeah so but we saw with at the gates yeah we're where i mean it created a whole scene they they played with us sick of it all sub zero and napalm death that was one show and people stood outside like smoking cigarettes during at the gates and we were like what is wrong with people slaughter of the soul like hard a classic then they got huge they made a whole genre oh yeah yeah no it, it was like just that record alone i mean it it created a whole in a way, it's like the same way that, like, I guess Meshuggah is responsible for better or worse for modern, you know, gent. It's like, yeah, at the gates, that just that record. I mean, it's not even like the whole catalog. Just Slaughter of the Soul created that whole, um, I mean, really that whole era of metalcore too. Like, in you know, in the states, like every band was was sound, and the vocals weren't the same, but you know, the same kind of riff, same sort of. Um, style and everything well you you know i often bring you guys up because i watched this happen too with exodus and 
but they, you know, and I'm not saying that you were like offended by me saying that the fans were offended, but no. <laughs> Exodus, I said the same thing when a certain record came out. I'm sure you know which Exodus record, but they had a return to form with Tempo of the Damned. And then they had great records with Rob Dukes. And so everything is cyclical. And then people discovered Exodus, Exodus again. And then Thrash came back. So I feel like hardcore metalcore is going to have that Thrash moment. And and some of it is now. Like when, when Bleeding Through got back and we did shows together, it was like pe people complained on all the dates that they didn't play. They wanted them. Yeah. Like they thought, you know, the show would have been way better if Bleeding Through was there. And I'm like, where were you like nine years ago when we were trying to like, you know, sell out these same rooms or whatever, yeah. right? So now it seems like you've gotten this, this, uh, this groundswell of people discovering the band. They discovered the band from that record onward, and they they start writing me, they start hitting me up, and uh, you know, what what do you, what, how could you say that? this this is this record's awesome? Blah, blah. I said, I the band is always welcome. I said, did they give up on you or did you give up on them? It wasn't that it wasn't that case. Those people who who maybe, you know, didn't like that record from the old school days for every 10 of them, there was a hundred of these new kids that love that record. Yeah. And so now you're kind of in a weird situation. Like, what do you do? How do you pick the set? Is it going to be both eras? Like, what do you do? Well, it's, it's funny you mention that because it, uh, I mean, for this for this show, it's pretty it's a it's a pretty easy path because it's like it's 20 years of haymaker and i think that like the other and i think that that's what most of the people coming to you know furnace fest like uh, and, and with the other kind of other bands that are playing i think that they're going to want to hear more like those you know those first two records with me singing on with haymaker and vendetta and maybe a little bit of venom and tears but um yeah it's funny because it's like there's like this whole uh you know, this, just the silo of, of a fan base that's, that just knows that record that found it either on the Spotify playlist or whatever. And, um, it's crazy. Cause it's like by far the, um, the most, uh, listened to, uh, on Spotify, Apple music and whatever, but it's like, we never played those songs live. I mean, it was like, um, it, you know, that, that record was, we, the beginning of the end for us, it was like, you know, we did that record, we went and did one tour and then things kind of fell apart after that. So it's like, yeah, it's just, it, it's this weird thing. And, and uh, yeah. Why, we why do you think like, why do you think it just was too much of a departure from the sort of meat and potatoes, hardcore, like to, now looking back, it's not really that much of a departure. You're, no. you're, you're, you're screaming on key kind of writing a note in some parts. It's definitely. There's some Pantera riffage, but it's not like, it's not like full on cemetery gates or, or this love or ballads or right. No. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not even that crazy, but I think it was just too outside of what, you know, people had kind of grown to expect. And it's just funny because like when we go back to um, like, I remember when we did Vendetta, that was like far outside of the box for people at the time. And we're just going like, dude, this is faster. This is in a lot of ways more traditionally you know, I mean, not like punk hardcore, but like it's it's more traditionally hardcore. It's there's parts that sound more like terror at that time or, you know, Madball or whatever than there were on Haymaker, which had a lot of like, you know, single string, like border on you know, new metal stuff in, in, on Haymaker. So it's funny because we got backlash for Vendetta at the time. We we're just going like, ah, we just can't win. And then. Um, which I think it ended up being a good thing because then we were like, well, you know, no matter what, it, like people are going to be, you know, either um, it, it's just whatever happens is going to be inevitable. So we just sort of kind of, you know, we just did what we wanted to do and, um, you know, for better or worse. But I think with Deathless, that was just like too far, too far outside for for most people, um, which is cool. I, I mean, you know, and then um, record we did after that was was in some ways for me. And I was just talking about this um, uh, with with Mentley, our bass player, um, the day before yesterday or something. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I thought that there was like at back at the time, like, been you know, five years or whatever since um, Deathless had come out. I was like, all right, you know, do 
I wanted to do a record that was kind of a little bit more, you know, not fan service, but it was just kind of more like cut and dried and a little simpler. And we did Intolerance. And um, it was funny because it, it kind of was like, granted, we weren't touring, but it was sort of like a ah, thanks, but no thanks kind of thing. You know, like the response to that record returning to form was like, well, what happened to the stuff you were doing on Deathless? And I was like, yeah. Bro, we, we like, still we still did good with that. Like we helped with the pre order for Intolerance, and it still did really well. And 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 the the Deathless pre order did really well too. Um, so it wasn't like I wasn't like actively trying to support the band, but yeah, I would have. I think that those two should have been maybe like flip flopped in a, in a yeah. sense because you you you. I think you just mixed the turnover from the scene. Like you missed it by like two or three years. It, it used to be that with the turnover, it would be so quick where kids would move on. They'd go to like, you know, they'd go to a genre with more girls or they'd go to like into EDM or they'd become lawyers and whatever. <laughs> but I, I think the, the timing caught up to that record. Real quick, everybody letting you know today's episode is brought to you by martyrstore.net. That is where you can get all the leftover hate breed event shirts so like the new jersey devils one the milwaukee batters one the uh the one from buffalo that everybody wanted that was sold out before vane even played you can go get it at martyrstore.net you'll see there's also crowbar restocks there's uh signed corpse grinder cds there's signed ripper cd eps and posters you'll see it all at martyrstore.net i i always joke around how especially when i first started the podcast i said you know you got to retire rise like you got a lyric police like you guys were the last one with the with the opener right it was the opener on that record it was like all right rise is done we can no, we're not bred there's no more rising arch enemy did it pod throw down pantera lamb of god hate breed everybody's got to rise just retire it and i swear yeah, until this day. how much how much further does one rise at that point you know what i'm saying seriously but every day someone tags me in a new song brand new comes there's a song every day written with fucking rise in it but you're up there man you're in the rise hall of fame you did it you you're top 10 you're definitely top 10 rise of all time that's sick that's that's good dude. that's a high that's a high uh high mark i i appreciate that but also you had other kind of like real signature songs on that record too right because i remember we played the shit out of uh Actually, no, it was no. What was the video? It was might have been it might have been before that, because unless it, it made it on just before Headbangers Ball, my era went off the air. Burn. Did you do a video for Burn? Yeah. That I think we made it on. I think it did. I'm pretty yeah. sure. So I remember seeing when I got a link to it somewhere where it had the MTV Chiron like the, you know, the yes, in the corner. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I think it was on there. I that think was it was because I want to say it was one of our featured songs. Like, remember, you could put the song in the MySpace profile. And I remember it getting I remember that was like that was kind of like it was a MySpace hit. Yeah. That was a big deal. Like terror, terror overcome, too. Like that was a yeah. that was a that was a MySpace hit and a headbangers ball hit. There was there. That was still when the 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 the, the hair the hair really caught on right after that, like the swoopy hair. Oh yeah, the yeah. The, the scene, you know, we would joke around and go, "Scene's dead, shave your head," and they, you know, they were not having it. Those kids were like, "Fuck these dudes! These dudes that want to fight me. I'm they're old." But all those bands blew up, like all the scene hair bands, because it it was interesting too, because they kind of migrated from. They were like, "Oh no, we don't like Atreyu and Avenged anymore. We're death metal." But they looked like those bands, but like, "Oh, we don't like Eighteen Visions anymore. We're death metal." But it was it was literally the look, but with a totally different sound, which always I always thought that was hilarious. That's a trip too, because usually they go hand in hand. Like you get a whole new look, and they're just like, like I, I can't be bothered to create a new look, you know. They're just like they're, they're we you know we change the sound, like just take the look that's there. You know? But all all those deathcore bands cite Throwdown as an influence because they just took your breakdowns and then like added like a little like noodling lick, or they <laughs> tuned it down and they added like one that weird string. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like they do that weird string thing, and it's like, yo, I heard this breakdown a hundred times already. They're like, no, nope, this is our version, right? Tuned to like F sharp or whatever, it just. Yeah. Yeah. G there was one, the one, the, yeah. Like there's bands that they did the G thing. I was like, wow, that's too low. Like how low is too low? I think well, that's too then low. It, 
at some point you're just you're playing a bass with additional strings you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like it, it, what but you know i dig that like i there's i couldn't listen to like i understand why an entire genre evolved out of a band it's like like and i know that deathcore or whatever and gent they're, they're different and it's, it's whatever but like as far as like the real like ultra low eight string thing you know i get why that came out of like you know the and and i get why that came to be but i i can't like i can't get into like listening to 10 you know different bands from that but there are some that do the you know the eight string thing where i'm just where i'm 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 there for it like i like like uh i don't know if they use an eight string but that band tesseract is just like gets uh, just non-stop rotation from me um I don't, I think that, uh, uh, Kublai Khan, I don't know if they, they're, they're different from, from that, you know, they're not the same, same animal, but, um, I'm very, very into, you know, like, like I, I, I'm, I'm easily pleased by You're that. You're Prague, bro. What's that? You're Prague. I, you know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe You're I You're kind I, of Prague. I got a little Prague maybe, you know, I'll listen to cloud kicker. I'll, I'll put on cloud kicker and I'll just. I don't even know what that is. I think I, I know I've heard someone say that. Is that Randy's thing? Randy's friends with them or something? I feel like Randy talks about them. No, nah, I'll maybe. I don't know. I haven't heard. Um, uh, Tesseract is the reason why I, I said uh, let a caveman live to uh, Dave Mustaine because of Tesseract. I think we I think we were like in the like the final four to get the tour. And uh, then they were like, nope. Dave loves this band. Mustaine loves this band Tesseract. And I was like, who? And, you know, because at that point we had been trying to get on tour with Megadeth for like 18 years. We finally did it. We did it not too long ago. We finally got it after trying that was, we finally got it. I think after trying for 23 years, but I remember I was like, wait, who? And they're like Tesseract. So then when I saw Dave, I was like, bro, Tesseract. And he's, he's looking at me like, what? I said, let, when I had him on the podcast, I'm like, yo, I, I, I appreciate the dream theaters and all the prog stuff, but bro, let a caveman live. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we made shirts. <laughs> you did. I'm going to need one. I'll, need I'll, one. I'll get you one. I'll bring it to Furnace Fest. But, they, but I did go and eventually listen to that band. And I was like, well, now I see why Dave chose them. I mean, that guy's fucking play their asses off. It's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's something else, and um, and they're not like a young band. Like I, I think they've been around for a while, and they, the dudes were in other bands. But yeah, I'm, I'm Matt and I both are, are huge, huge fans of Tesseract, and um, yeah, I'll get, I'll get into I'll get a little prog, you know. I'm not afraid. That's that's the that's the time that's the one time that we're talent beat hustle. It What's doesn't that? happen often. <laughs> wait, wait, wait say again. That that was like the one time I can I can recall that talent beat hustle. Oh yeah, that was like that was <laughs> that was good. Um, you know, I got so ahead of myself when you were first talking about doing Furnace Fest and you're bringing your daughter. I forgot to say like the instantly when you said that, my mind always goes to the gutter. Like my mind always goes to like the the worst possible thing, and then I have to self edit. But so the first thing was like, oh, man, he's bringing the kids. So that means you're not going to bring a bunch of like thoughts up on stage during <laughs> baby got back with their throw down booty shorts on. Because I thought if you broke into that, and I know Furnace Fest is a little conservative crowd. I know it's a little bit of, you know, so, some Bible beaters and respect. I have no problem with that. So they might not get as loose as say like the Orange County crowd or like East Coast, like New Jersey. You do baby got back. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's game over. Yeah, it's, it's like that over. Mastodon video. What was the, what, like, remember when the, oh, <laughs> remember when yeah, that yeah, Mastodon yeah. video came out? <laughs> um, oh, what track was that? But you're not going to do it, right? No, no, I don't think, I don't think you'll see any cover songs. Last, last of, on the list would probably be that one. Um, but uh, yeah. Can you believe <laughs> that song still haunts you? Uh, I mean, not in a bad way. It was, it was like, it was just funny because that was, you know, we did it in this era, you know, before I started singing. So Keith is the one singing on, on that song. And, um, but we did it, I think we played it live where I sang um, a couple few times. We just never made it a, a regular thing, but it was like, 
Um, it's just so funny to think back and like um, we were t- talking about because it was on that comp, the um, too legit for the pit comp, and uh, <laughs> we were t- talking about doing House of Pain for that. And then it was like a last minute, like, oh, it might be kind of funny if we did this. And like in hindsight, I'm just going like, oh man, like it would be so much different and and so so much easier to say no to a a, a shout for a or a request for that song if um if it were House of Pain. But yeah, it's it's cool. It was it was fun, you know. I mean, and people like it. So so wait, you were gonna do Jump Around instead? Yeah, yeah, we were originally gonna do Jump Around. Um, and there's one other that was in the running too, but um. Yeah, I think that like at, I don't remember exactly, but I think at practice somebody was like, "Oh, you could just do the baby got back riff like this," and we're like, "Oh yeah, that's that we gotta do it." Like, <laughs> and it was just it was just too easy to to do, and it was just too, you know, the idea of having uh of having Keith sing those lyrics too was it was really I think uh, um, a, spe- a special thing for the dudes in the band, you know. <laughs> you 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 have to at least go into the riff. Not, yeah, no. I know it's a, fa- I know it's gotta be a family fam- friendly show now. You know, your daughter's coming out. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to have like, there's going to be like youth pastors in the audience. Like, please don't play baby got back. Please don't do it. But if you just go into the riff, the crowd will go bonkers and it'll be hilarious. You should, and you need some extra stuff to get, to, to meet that contracted time. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Maybe we could just have the riff. We could just do like, two and a half minutes of just the riff like we're building into it you know <laughs> we'll do some banter and then like when it's go time for the song to kick off then we just go into like uh, you know toto or, or whatever you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah no the riff it's it's always been yeah we always use it as kind of a teaser you know but, so uh, so so why furnace fest because i mean at first i was like wow, they turned down everything I throw their way, but they take Furnace Fest. Like maybe the money was like, maybe uh, I needed to add a zero to the <laughs> to the offer. Like what is going, because people, that's the other thing. Like people hit me up, like, I don't understand. And I'm like, dude, you, you got the offers, right? It's not like the offers don't no, 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 cross yeah. your, your desk. Yeah. No. And, um, you know, and, and honestly, like we were, we had no, intentions of ever doing like a full tour and then when the perseverance thing came up that was the only time where we were just like oh man like can we figure out how to make this work can we take the time off can we go head out can we justify it to our families <laughs> can we, you know <laughs> yeah. and it just it just we couldn't no it has you know at, at this phase in life especially it's a, not, none of it has anything to do with money whatsoever um with uh you know, we're happy if we don't have to spend a bunch of money ourselves to go out and just play a show for fun, you know? Um, so no, it, it furnace fest, it was really, it, that was just like, it, it kind of came out of the blue. Cause we didn't have any, we were added late. I don't know. I don't know what they were announcing up till the point when we got added, but, um, like I, I mentioned earlier, uh, I, I think, I think the bled was supposed to play that slot. So that's why we're kind of this weird, we're sort of like, and that's not weird, but you know, we're on main stage for that. And we're in between, um, knuckle puck and, uh, reliant K I think, or I can't remember, but you know, it's up there, but, um, it's kind of a little weird. It's sort of like, all right, we're going to go from shed over here and then maybe come back depending on, you know, what you're, you know, and, and looking online at what people are like, Oh, Hey, these are the bands I'm going to see. There's a lot of like, you know, highlighting these bands and it's like go over this stage see if row down then come back here to, to the shed you know so um we got kind of just thrown in there last minute and it was never it was not a, a it was not a plan like we we it just you know we had kind of written off doing a show this year at all even though we had we were you know for the last year and a half or so matt and i had been working on doing the haymaker reissue like the 20 year anniversary and that's going to be coming out soon a little plug there um and we're gonna you know do the whole web store for that um do vinyl and the cd long box um and nice. uh, and a tape um uh, yeah i'd explain to my i think i had yeah it was my wife i'd explain to my wife what the long box was like for i'm like you don't remember this she's like 
ah, and she's like, you know, like three, three years younger than me. So I'm like, you don't remember the long box. Like I had them all saved. I, you know, I, don't, I wish I had a single one, but um, yeah, we're doing long box. We're doing a, some cassette tapes, whatever, but we were all focused on that. And um, we had, we had kind of this idea of doing um, like just a show at either, well, we were hoping to do like a chain reaction show sometime this year around that because we wanted to do something close to home. But then, you know, like a lot of different kind of things came into play and we, it just didn't look like it was going to happen. We were sort of, we were sort of burnt on the idea too. We were kind of like, all right, like let's just do the record and then whatever, like we'll, we'll make it happen another time, you know? Um, but yeah, like I said, Chad, Chad hit up, uh, hit up Downey, um, you know, my dear friend, our, our manager for a long time and was like, Hey, like, I don't know if your guys are you know, open for this or not, but you know, do you want it? And he's like, dude, and he came to us and to me and Matt was like, just do this, do this show. Like it's, it's perfect timing. Like it's all built in like that, you know, yes, you have to fly out to Alabama, but you know, like just do it. So yeah, we, we made sure that, um, we could do it with, uh, you know, the lineup that we wanted to do it with. And, um, uh, yeah, there we are. And I don't know, 20, 20 years later from the first one. <laughs> yeah. People, people are coming from Europe. I mean, people oh, are coming shit. from Australia uh it, it's gonna be great now people are really looking forward to it and i know there's some still there's still some people on the fence because i see the little messages like yeah i gotta figure it out and now we're you know this is the week where everybody's getting their kids back into school like you know you're yeah. you're everybody's back to school shopping but i i think i think people will see this we'll get this out next week and i think people will see this and they'll make the decision because i see people coming from new orleans coming from florida coming from jersey pennsylvania so um it's going to be a lot of fun and, and I, i'm happy that you guys are doing it let's let's uh let's go to the chat here um and just so, so i can clarify you know the i, I want to say it was holy roller like that song was that the one that you played me or doc played me and i when what was the one i think zeus played it for me right you did it with zeus no that was the one record that that well apart from haymaker but which is before we met zeus um we didn't mix that with zeus but we did vendetta with zeus and then deathless uh was the record after that 2009 that uh we recorded with mud rock and zeus mixed so right. holy roller was okay. on Venom and tears yeah see that was a banger like i was like no this this i get it it's yeah it's got the hook or whatever what was the single on deathless then was that the one that was more that that was the, that was a career suicide one. That was uh that well not that track, but uh this continuum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but but even now it's so. But I was thinking more from like uh, what are the old school fans? You know, you you you. It was almost like you doubled down. Which listen, I love a good double down. If you're gonna double down, <laughs> go for it. Um, <laughs> but at that point, I was also kind of like we already had dragon force and all the remains and, and avenge seven of all these bands where I was like, man, whoever sticks to the meat and potatoes is going to win here because it, even though we had breakdown fatigue, we, by that point, we also had noodling fatigue yeah, where how was, much there was a noodle fatigue happening there. It, how many iron maiden like leads can, you know what I mean? Like there yeah. just is only so many that you can do. And then someone's gonna, um, but I bet you if you were to come out, and do a tour or do i bet you people go bonkers for that shit i bet you they that gets a pop yeah and, and we want to keep like like we don't want to yeah i don't know I've, we've seen like a handful of we were kind of reticent about it all just because we were like oh so many like reunions so many you know older bands coming back from the dead and then there's been a lot of them have been awesome it's been cool in this you know this nostalgia trip but like some of them it's like, oh man, like we didn't need this to need to happen, you know. And I just don't want to be one of those bands where it's like, you know, like you you shit on the memory of whatever, like what however somebody pictured their younger days listening to the band or seeing the show. I want to spoil for that for them by coming up and having it sound like shit or go over go over like shit or whatever. So you know, so I just like, um, yeah, I, I we want to keep like you know not keep it scarce, but like, you know, just do it just enough to where it's like, it, it's if, like an event for, for people that, you know, haven't seen us in a long time. Oh, that's great. So, so when people say to me, like, tell us stories from the, we heard you did this on the, 
on the tour with it. Like you brought up the European tour with Share a Bus. Like someone was just asking me to tell him. And I'm like, just ask those guys. Like, I don't want to. I'll just Brian Williams the shit out of the whole story. Like, I'll just add like other elements and I'll, I'll go. But, <laughs> but from what, so, and, and you got to edit too for the podcast. Cause I do remember riding in your van. Yeah. And, uh, and being inappropriate and, no, and like, very, very appropriate, real <laughs> outstanding. Uh, you know, that I was amazing you- when, when we did like some, just a few shows with you guys on the East coast, I think it was like, Hey, breed AF, um, jailhouse rock. You did. Yeah. You did a, you, you did a tour though. What was the other tour that you, we, we did the European tour. We did that. Um, and you, you rode in our van and so did stigma. Yes. And we had, and we had Johnson, uh, still doing. So it was just like, dude, somewhere out there, there is audio recording of just like, like before there was podcasts, there was just like you <laughs> stigma and Johnson just talking and it would be like, uh, and we had recordings of it. We're like, Oh, what do we do? What can you do with this? We would just listen to it. Cause it was just like this meeting. Of Talk about mind. career suicide, put that out. And it's like, <laughs> everybody's done. No, it was like, you're talking about like Arby's. I remember like, I remember, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember, uh, we had this recording of, uh, of Johnson going like, Oh, go pull over. We're going to go to Arby's. And, um, and you know, five for five. And we stigma going like, oh, what's, what's five for five? What, what is this? Oh, stick, you never had five, you never had Arby's before? I don't know. What is this? You're like, oh, bro, it's a it's jalapeno pop. Wait, wait, did I want to get the secret menu from Arby's? Was it like something like that? Where, cause what's the, what was yeah, the, yeah. maybe, maybe someone in the chat can look up what it was. I remember we, we went to a couple of Arby's, maybe not with you guys, but definitely with other bands. I know for a fact, I bought other bands like that ignorant, whatever it is. Basically it's like where you got to say the name and then they do it. It's like all the different meats on one sandwich, I think. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like the meat monster or it's got like some, you know how you got the secret menu at in and out. I was just going to say, yeah. Oh, so funny. Cause we would be like, when we would come out here, um, you know, the Peacock brothers from, uh, you know, you know, Scott and Steve, right. From embrace today. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah embrace you know today. That. They were on Jake's label. Yeah. I think. Yeah. From math. So they're, right? they're from whole, they're from, they're from Massachusetts and just like, yeah. My, one of my favorite memories touring with Scott, uh, we would, we went to in and out like afterward after a show in San Diego and, uh, you know, we go up there and we, we get our food back and then, he comes back and like in his thick sack, thick accent, and he's like, "Hey, they got like they got like fucking five things on the menu." And Millie comes back here, and you know he says some some Freemason code words, and he's coming back with a fucking <laughs> manicotti. <laughs> he's like, "What is this shit?" Um, yeah, so here yeah, we go. Yeah, the Arby's Meat Mountain. Yeah, right. I, I, <laughs> The Sometimes they don't know what you're talking about, but some some do. Or you could go to Wendy's and there's like the cube where it's just like it's basically like a four by four from in and out. But they okay. call it the cube. I like to tell people I, I, I got I got this friend who was like into back at the time that was like super into the secret menu at, at in and out. And so I would we would just like make up like things that weren't on it just in hopes that he would go and and just show up there. I'd be like, Dude, you got to order the Dr. Green thumb. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, it's what's up with that? And be like, it's got jalapenos all over it, and it's got you know a different sauce and whatever. And uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so we, you know, you set little booby traps for them. <laughs> Dude, I love that. I'm meanwhile, I'm worried that we're having like some totally just not politically correct conversation. You're like, no, you're talking about going to Arby's. It's oh, just- yeah, it was. It was like the real. It was the minutia. It was the. It was the the, the fun like. Yeah, just nonsense. So I was, I was still drinking though. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Letting you know today's episode is brought to you by IndieMerchStore.com. That is the place for you to get all your merch needs. Go to IndieMerchStore.com. Use the code JOSTA10, and you will save 10% at checkout. You'll see all the Cannibal Corpse restocks. You'll see the Carnifex pre-order. You'll see all the Thy Artist murder stuff. I know the record got pushed back a little bit, but check it out at IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10. Now back to the show. Someone else on that tour where I was buying, I don't know, pickled eggs for them to eat or, or yes, cakes for that was me. Was that you? That was me. 
Yeah, so that okay. was the whole – now, was that before or after the, the European tour? Because that's what I was trying to remember the other day. It might have been before. Because you were heavily into, um, like, paying people <laughs> to, to eat something or do something. That was gross. Yeah, just for personal, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you got out of it. But – and a lot of it, I realized too, it's separate tours was, was uh pig oriented. I don't know if that was, if that was just, um, uh, a coincidence or, or like, I don't know, but I remember at the year on that tour, when you were in the van with us with stigma, I remember you're like, all right, bro, I, like for 50, you got to eat a, you got to eat this pig's foot. I'm like, <laughs> you can't eat, you can't eat the whole thing. You're like, just, just gnaw on it. Just eat <laughs> I give you, I give you, <laughs> I give you fifteen extra bucks. Just, <laughs> see that bunion? It's not on the bunion. Uh, I, remember, I remember stigma going, "Oh, Jamie, why just no? Don't make him do this. Just stop. This is <laughs> oh, bro. No, it just it's too much. Just don't, just don't even do it." And then, was, well, then there was Europe too, where there was a like a butcher shop, like like randomly, like a like a like eastern block like butcher shop and there's just like you know looked like a cannibal corpse album cover like, <laughs> in the menu, you know and i remember <laughs> i remember we walked by that and i think you i think you bought it so there was like a like a pig's head like i'm uh, pretty sure you bought it but you either bought yeah, it or, we ears. Were or for some reason but so you had the pig's head and it was like cut down the middle though and like held together by like twine and i remember you going like all right, we got the pig's head. Two two hundred euro. You wear it the whole, <laughs> wear it the whole set. Sing your whole set. With. And I was like, dude, even if I could, like, like make if I could survive that, there's no way I could have it. Like, you know, I can't put. I'm gonna put the mic like under the snout, you know, <laughs> or, like through the twine. And I was like, dude, I don't think logistically this is gonna work. You're like, all right. Then like take it and like make like like use the twine and make like it like a medallion. <laughs> you just gotta wear it. Like That's a, hard. Like the pig's head medallion. medallion. And I was like, I, that was the one I couldn't do. But I did eat like a, I think for fifty euro, I ate an ambrosia salad. Um, you know, it's like the mayonnaise. Oh, you know. I hate the ambrosia. Yeah, it's bad. And uh, I threw up. And then, um, I, uh, yeah, I think you gave me half for that because i grew <laughs> up and uh that was part of the the rules but um uh yeah God. that was it yeah that especially. was a, that was like the hottest shows we ever played was on that tour it was brutal no ac no ventilation in any of the clubs we played that no crazy ice. no ice i'm like what they forget the recipe what is going on over here like this is crazy <laughs> Like they would get mad too. I remember the lady getting mad with us backstage and she had the tongs and she looked at me and she would grab one cube and put one. I'm like, yo, hook. It. And I would try to, I remember trying to give her 50 to just give me the whole tray of ice and she wouldn't. Yeah. It's like asking for guac, like extra guac at Chipotle. And you're just oh. like, nah, like you're like, just put it on a little thicker, you know? And they're like, that'll be extra. I'm like, no, I'm already paying the extra, you know? And they're like, no, like it'll be a, a double guac. So then you have a double choice. guac, yeah. triple guac. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're paying like, then it's like 83, 75 for a chicken bowl, you know? It's, yeah. I think that might've been the time where we were in the van. I'm not sure if it was with you, but there's been multiple times where stigma rode in. I've ridden in many vans with stigma, but I remember somehow we were talking about, and I've told this story, up, uh, so I'll just really paraphrase it quickly. I've told it too many times. But basically, he goes, I don't get it. What's wrong with these guys? Why would they name their band? Like, what did the whales do to you? What did the whales do to you? And we're like, what do you mean? And he's like, why do they want to poison a whale? Why would they do that? And we were like, no. And then forever, it was poison the whales. We were like, yo, that's hard. Like poison the whales. Like it's an anti-ignite band. He was like, Zoli's going to hate this band. Zoli will hate these guys. He'll want to fight these guys. He's doing. And we're like, oh, my God. It was so good. One of so many legendary, like just stigma-isms. 
I, I remember oh. on that same tour, he got the, he got this little, he got like a little fish, a goldfish tattoo. It was like wearing like a, like a Navy, like the little Navy hat, you know? And I remember him just being like, like, he's like, he's like, yeah, it's got tattooed. And he was like excited. And then we're like, what'd you, what'd you get? He's like, oh, you know, I, don't, I don't even know why I got it. You know, it's just, look at this. Is this fucking goldfish? And he's wearing like a, he's like in the, he's in the Navy. And I don't know. And then, he, then I could see it like just as he was talking about it, he was like over that he had already done it. He was going <laughs> about it. Okay. I still, I still got to get an AF tattoo. He went and got the Hapri tattoo, and I never got the AF tattoo. I, I really fucked up. I got to, you know, maybe I'll go get that. Yeah. Like before I see them next, because they're the best. Like I, I really owe it to him. Like we got, we use the same stencil for our Hapri tattoo. I, I got to go get my AF. I got to oh, go okay. get the boots. What was, what was the Hapri tattoo that you guys got? Uh, it's just the logo. logo. Okay. Yeah, he got it on his calf. I got it on my arm. But yeah, I really, I, I don't know. I might have got the crowbar tattoo instead. I forget. Because I think, yeah, I forget. But let's go to the chat. Everybody was so psyched to have you on. And thank you for the time, Dave. And, and we're oh, looking yeah. forward to seeing you at Furnace Fest. And and just to put it out there, I'll talk to, I'll go through the official channels. But, you know, everybody knows Hapri 30th anniversary is coming up next year. So there's a lot of... Uh-huh. Uh, it's so a lot of people, you know, hitting me up, but they, you know what? They also listen, the mosh core, they want like, they want bury your dead. A lot of people missed out on you guys missed out on yeah. them missed out. Who's the other one that everybody's hits me up about. Um, I mean, they hit me up about the new bands too. Like they love God's hate. Um, they love uh, what's uh, you know, lion heart. There's a, bu- there's a bunch of bands from every era that, um, you know, they want to see basically bands who all sound the same from start to finish on the show. It's like, just give them what they want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, we can't, we can't have this eclectic shit anymore. Just give them start to finish five hours of mosh. Yeah. They just want to be just inundated with the, the mosh. Every band with a rise, multiple rise during every set. Um, Alex Atkinson writes, how did Dave's appearance on living sacrifice come about and favorite song from living sacrifice? Good question, Alex. Ooh. Um, well, we've, we've known the living sacrifice guys for a while and we've like got a lot of mutual friends. Um, and we actually, it's, it's funny cause, um, Lance, well, yeah, Lance Living Sacrifice did a tour for us on drums when it was like latter years when we were when after Ben had left and we had like no you know fixed drummer for touring Lance was out there playing a lot of shows um, so we're super tight with those guys love them um, I, uh, I I'm trying to remember the uh, the song that that I did with them it was it was killer I remember recording it um, out here in California but. Um, Man, my favorite song by them. Shit. Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite song, but there's this riff in, um, I think the song is called Ignite. And it's just like, these dudes come up with riffs like where they're just so innovative and it's, and they're not like out there trying to reinvent the wheel, but they just do, they do riffs in a way. And, and the, and they're just so locked in like between, um, Rocky and Lance, like, it's just like it, in a lot of ways. And I mean, there's nothing comparable to like, you know, diamond Vinny, but in a lot of ways are like locked in, in this way where the drums and the guitars just like are talking to one another. And there's a riff in that song. That's probably my favorite riff by them overall. And then, um, uh, God, I have to look through the, the catalog, but, um, yeah, like, um, what's it? I know it's like a, it's a real, popular one but um uh, what the fuck's it called it's on blood work i don't know the names of songs so this is really i think i booked them on that i think i booked them on that album they came and they and they played in connecticut i actually caught up with bruce earlier this year i'm gonna i gotta get him on the podcast before furnace fest too and we want them to we want them to do milwaukee metal fest that's the other thing too you know we people had hit me up and said originally when we were gonna do uh, some some more hardcore and metalcore stuff on Milwaukee Metal Fest. I you know, I was totally 
into having you guys play but since it was the first year back and there was already like all these like staunch like death metal and black metal dudes you know there was a lot of message boards like oh it's gonna be all bro bands and flat brims this dude bought the festival it's gonna be e-town and fucking so i was like i had to make sure we had like the true with the v bands and all the you know the unreadable logos and all that stuff right, and it was right. great you know and i love a lot of those bands so um but you know you know how it is like first year back like next year we can do the i mean we did do biohazard and it was badass it was yeah, it was great nice. it was it was their first show back yeah Li living um, sack uh that that that's another band on furnace fest apart from you guys and and uh you know terror and wanting to see some of the older like um uh you know like trust killer bands like hopes fall and stuff um i i really want to see a living sacrifice it's been it's been a bit and those dudes just kill it they're just just shredders yeah and that's like a that's basically like a hometown home area southeast yeah type of show for them um is great but yeah there's i i wonder what their set's gonna be like because there's a lot of rippers and we there was a couple i forget which one they did the video for um but i mean first three off hammering process were, were bangers i think one of them i think blood works on that record but also uh conceived in fire people real that's to me that was like when they really kind of uh that, that song I, th I think it's called ignite I, i'm pretty sure that's on that yeah. yeah yeah that's on that record there's 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 some rippers on that record too um but you know the the, the they're the pioneers of before they went less death metal i mean they were the pioneers of like christian death metal like that was like a thing i actually feel like we could do striper and living sacrifice on one night in right. milwaukee at milwaukee Metal, and like people might lose their fucking minds like especially if we could get like who would be the 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 middle man like the bridge band between the two we would we would have to get i'm trying to think who's the other big christian one that we could get maybe demon hunter or maybe uh right because yeah that, it's that's still it's still that. metal enough even though yeah. they kind of associate them with the with the new metal or the more melodic metal it's still metal enough where i think there's fans of all three yeah no that'd be that would be killer and howard jones would free he'd lose his mind because he loves all three of those bands like he would he would because he's a striper like him do you know that there's a whole striper text chat with like chris jericho howard jones richard christie like there's so many striper That's fans awesome <laughs> <laughs> and then the next night we just do behemoth and like incantation <laughs> and watane it's like it's like just yeah that would be that would be hard um all right listen we got to we got to wrap this up but thank you so much and uh and yeah keep 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 hope alive for 2024 30th anniversary of hate breed Bro, what's a what's a venue you always wanted to play that you never played in Southern California? Like, what's a what's a bucket list venue? Oh man, the um, Forum. Yeah, because we can't do forum numbers. I don't think we <laughs> unless we get someone else to headline. Like, yo, Avenged, put this up. <laughs> we really yeah. want to do the Forum call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But oh, we're like, man. well, you could only play the first, we you could only play what was the what was the video they had where the kid was wearing a hate breed shirt out? We we played the shit out of that on headbangers. Oh, where they, they had the funeral, right? Isn't isn't it the one with the funeral? I or think so. No, yeah. it's like with all the kids in their bedrooms and stuff. Maybe I've I don't know. Dude, that my venue, that was talk about the drinking days. Yeah. This venue in uh San Diego is sick. I went, I saw the Pantera Lamb of God show on on saturday um there's an amphitheater there that was super cool and i i'll tell you i that was like my that was my cardio warm-up for furnace fest wait wait you came out of mosh pit retirement oh i've never really retired like if mashuga plays or if lamb well it's been a while since i've, I've pitted a lamb of god but i did pit to lamb of god and i pitted start to finish lamb of god went took bathroom break start to finish pantera wow um, respect uh, yeah pardon the pun yeah um and that it 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 was a little bit of a wake-up call like it was <laughs> like a, you know what i mean and my friend my friend chase was like hey like are you 
how are you preparing for running around and singing? Like, how do you, how do you, what are you going to do? He's like, you should go for, you should go for runs on like this trail that's by our house. You should go for a run on the wetlands and just yell while you're running. And he's just trying to bait me into doing some bullshit. But like, I've found that that is a very specific type of cardio when you are trying to move and, I mean, you know, like, and scream at the same time, like it just, it drains you in a different way. You know what I mean? Like how, like, you know, it's one thing to go do a sprint. It's another thing to like wrestle or whatever, running and yelling, you know, like it, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's real specific draining type of cardio. See, I, you're giving me all sorts of marketing ideas. Like if we were to do something, we, we have to go, we like, we got to call Tito Ortiz. Mm -hmm. We got to call, like, I'm trying to think like who's Huntington beach. Like we got to call like Southern California dudes, boss root in Michael Bisping. And you know, you know, boss has the thing where you put, it's like a, it's a O2 trainer where oh, the training we, mask. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we do that. Like if we, if we end up doing a show for the 30th anniversary, do, we do that where we just do like the videos where like, where we, where we have to like run with the flag with Tito Ortiz, like through OC, like, and then we promote the whole thing. Yeah. We, you're giving me good ideas. Cause for 30th anniversary, I can't come out. Like I have to come out looking better than I did this year or last year. Yeah. Because you got, yeah, yeah, you gotta have, you gotta have Tito. I mean, you got right it. for Huntington Beach. Like, is he still yeah. in? O like, is he? No, is he he's still in, now? He's in Florida now? Yeah. So, is so he? Much. Of course. Yeah, but but you could. Yeah, yeah. You should. You should. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's probably a necessary. Uh, or do we? Or do we go the other route and we tr and we try for Chuck? Ooh, because Chuck's well, pitted for Slayer. Like Chuck's been at many Hatebreed shows. Like Chuck. Dude. I have a shirt. I have a photo somewhere of Chuck wearing a throwdown shirt. Yes. And Ron Jeremy is in the photo with him. <laughs> and they're just both like, like, like coked out of their minds. Like it just, <laughs> and they're just like, and it, like, I don't even know how he ended up in the shirt. And I thought maybe it was the MMA company at the time or something, but it was like through other channels, people were like, no, that's the, that's like, he knows that that's what it was for. Yeah, like, you, know, you said like he's a metal dude or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, that was a that was a, a high praise, you know, Ron Jeremy. That's awesome. No, that's back when like a show. That's back when you could go backstage at a show in like L.A. or Vegas or or San Diego or anywhere, and you would have a cast of characters like that. Especially on those Slayer tours that we did, where it was like, wait, who's back there? And you go back there and you're like, oh my God. And the you you find metalheads in the craziest places. Now I feel like it's, and I'll have to do a separate episode for the Patreon for this, but I saw the quote unquote Momoa pitting um, video, which was like, it kind of, he kind of just like jumped and limped a little bit. Like it didn't, or maybe he got pushed. Yeah. I was talking about this. Like I did a little analysis with a friend and, and, and we were like, is there like a fear of liability? Like he knows, I mean, that's a large dude, like just the physics alone of him pitting, like there's so much potential. You gotta, you gotta take into account like, okay, net worth, popularity, like he's already a, like a spectacle there. Um, so easily could run a dude, just, just delete a dude. At, in, yeah. In, and that's a big lawsuit for him. So maybe he's like, Oh, I really want, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I want to say that like, he desperately wants to pit like, like Jen Pop, but is, is just like, can't risk it. Like, I think that's, no. I think that's where it's coming from, but yeah, it was a yeah, little, he, it was a little underwhelming. Like it was like, it was just kind of, yeah, I don't know. He hears the video. Brian's okay. got it. Yeah. 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 Hey, you yeah. know, Hey, listen, that, that's a video I haven't seen. So he, at least he did. He, he no, feel he, like the yeah. circle walk. Yeah. He's getting pumped and the pit looks a little sparse. So what's he, you know, what's the expectation? Like, you know what I mean? Like, is right. he gonna, is he gonna activate or. Cause after, after Drew Bledsoe and the whole like Everclear debacle, I think they all got named in the suit. I think, I, I think somebody had to pay to, and I think like Everclear kind of sold like a couple of the Patriots players out. Like, I think they were like, no, we didn't invite you. We didn't tell you to stage dive. Like, where's the video? Like, I would love to get art from Everclear on the show. To, I don't know if they could even still talk about it, right? Because because it was a it was well, a major suit. 
that yeah, almost set a precedent for artist liability, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably that was, to keep it on the list. I just remember being like, Everclear, it's not even hard. Like, not the band. like why is he staged? There's like six foot, like 250 dudes, like stage diving at Everclear. But there's been multiple. We're going to have, yeah, maybe we'll have you back for the worst ath or the worst celebrity mosh episode I would love for that. Patreon. I you have to keep it on Patreon where it's not going to be, you know, where they're not, people aren't going to snitch. Cause uh, like anytime we do anything like this, then they go right to the people and then the people hear about it and then it's drama. Like, what, like yeah. And then their, their bomb, their pit credentials are diminished. And it's like, yeah. But you know what? Josh Barnett destroys Momoa in the pit. I wish Barnett was there and no they brain. met and it was like, and, and Momoa was like, all right, I'm out. Like, yeah. But, you know, no, oh, that's, that's a goat whore. Yeah, no, that's that's two different. Yeah, man, no, no, Bar- Barnett in that pit. That I would, yeah, you got to avoid that. That's a, that's, that's a, there's terrifying. levels to that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Dave, it'll be great to see you guys play. Looking forward to it. Everybody, go get your tickets, Furnace Fest. Thank you, and thanks to Ryan Downey. Shout out to Ryan Downey for uh, setting this up, and thanks everybody from Patreon. Take it easy. Thanks everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Quick little outro, and thanks for checking out this episode with Dave Peters from Throwdown. You could have heard it way sooner if you go subscribe at gasdigital.com. And if you want any of the tour diary episodes that I've been recording from the road, go to patreon.com slash Josta. Of course, I gotta thank indiemerchstore.com. Big shout out to indiemerchstore.com. Use the promo code Josta10. And then also go to martyrstore.net for any of the leftover event shirts or any of the ones that we're going to reprint we'll put those up too i see a lot of requests for the pittsburgh shirts we'll get those up at martyrstore.net and thank you if you've come out to any of the shows they've been absolutely incredible we had a great time at new england metal fest this past weekend we're really looking forward to furnace fest this weekend so go to furnacefest.us for your tickets and see hatebreed and throwdown together again after all these years and uh yeah that's about it drink your coffee do your push-ups listen to death metal bye-bye Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Dan Smith, Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato. Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St, Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Monson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arnorock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.